Mark Leshley is with us. You know Mark, he's a good friend of Tennis Channel, the chairman and CEO of Universal Tennis, who brings us the UTR, Universal Tennis Rating, which has really been a massive step forward for tennis in terms of metrics and evaluating players and matchups. Mark, it's great to have you back at the U.S. Open. Bring us up to speed on uh, what's new with the UTR. Yeah, well, thank you for having me again, Brett. Um, you know, there's 100 million people that play tennis in the world, and we just think there's a massive opportunity to make the experience better in tennis. And so what we continue to do is to invest in technology now that's going to make that less, more affordable, it's going to be easier to play, and it's an opportunity to eliminate the frustrations in the game. And also, at the same time, help people who are in the business of tennis. Yeah, I know you've got, time. you've got a lot going on, uh, including a new partnership with Team 8. Team 8 is a company our fans are likely familiar with. That's the agency that was formed by Roger Federer and uh, his man, Tony Gatsik. Yeah, so Team 8 just became a major shareholder and investor and partner with us. Uh, we're really excited to have Tony and Roger. And they also have two other partners, Dirk Ziff and Ian McKinnon. And they're just really, really keen to focus on helping tennis and support tennis. And also at the same time, they're going to be a powerful uh, ally with us to help really unify tennis. Let, let me just jump up to, to 10,000 feet for yeah. a second, because we use the UTR all the time to evaluate player matchups and, and more accurately sort of estimate where players are in the arc of their year. Yeah. But for club players, I, I think we don't talk enough about how useful it is, because yeah. it's not just pros who have UTRs. Correct. Any tennis player in the world can have a UTR. And if you're a club player at home looking for a match, what more useful yeah. tool in the world could you have than this? So I'm uh, glad you asked that, Brett. So in October, we're going to roll out a platform now that every player in the world can have a rating in their local club, in their local community. So any tennis player, any organizer, and, and essentially now, what you're going to be able to do is to figure out what level you're at. We've looked at matches in the United States. We track 5.8 million tennis matches in the yeah. United States. Only 35% of singles matches in the U.S. are what they call competitive, which is a close match. Yeah. Which means that 50% of those are decisive, which is a bad experience. It's a beating. So if you show up for a tennis event and you get your butt whooped, it's not a particularly good experience. So now, if you understand your level, we're seeing 5x increases in participation with juniors. We're seeing two to three folds improvements in competitive formats. So it's really exciting to see how this is being deployed. And we're going to roll out in local communities in October. If you think of how advanced this sport is, yeah. the idea that until now we have all used 3.0, 3.5, 4. Yeah. Point, that's not a very precise yeah. Yeah. metric. So what you guys are doing is really breaking it down to a much finer point. I do want to ask you about some of the pros as we get ready for the main draw, the U.S. Open. We've got a graphic of some of the women's players uh, and their tour ranking compared to their UTR ranking. It's always interesting to see where they differ. Yeah. Palop is one in the world in the WTA rankings, one in the world in the UTR. So that's not surprising. But as you go down the list, talk to us about Kiki Burton's who is 13 in the world on the WTA, yeah. but two in the world on the UTR. Yeah, I mean, Kiki, so you know what UTR does is sort of tracks how well you're competing. And Kiki, of course, has just been competing so well. And, you know, she's got eight top 10 wins here. Uh, and obviously coming into Cincinnati, she actually was number one on UTR. And even though she was unseated and ranked 17 in the world, she ended up winning the tournament. So she's really on a tear and really competing well. So somebody to really pay attention to in the tournament. Yeah, she had four top 10 wins in route to that title in Cincinnati. Another one I wanted to ask you about is a young American who, who's had a good summer after a long layoff. Amanda Anasimova is ranked 137 in the world, according to the WTA. Yeah. But the UTR tells us that she's 11. Yeah, she, she's trending really well. You know, she's obviously the number one girls 18 uh, junior on UTR in the world. Uh, you know, she's so good, she really can't play junior events anymore, and she's limited by the WTA schedule, uh, but a fierce competitor and somebody to really pay attention to doing this event. Yeah, missed four months with the foot injury, so that's why her WTA ranking is so low, but obviously the recent results uh, bring the UTR up. Uh, talk to us about somebody to look uh, look at closely on the men's side. Yeah, I mean, uh, Kutchinov uh, is somebody who's really interesting. You know, he's uh, he's now 10th overall uh, in, in, in UTR, even though he's ranked 27. Uh, you know, he had a great uh, summer. He had the semis in, uh, in Toronto. Uh, he took out uh, both Corinna Booster and Isner and had a tight match with Rafa. Beat Query at Cincy, and uh, he's really competing well. And I think he's really trending upwards, so somebody to pay attention to. And you make a good point about he had a tight match with Rafa, even though he lost. Margin of victory counts, right? Correct, and that will boost you up. 
All right, Mark, uh, what you're doing for tennis and, and for club players and us evaluating the pros has uh, been immeasurable. Thanks and continued sure. success. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Mark Leshley from UTR and Universal Tennis. We will take a break, come back with more of Q2 at the Open on this Thursday in the Big Apple.